This right here is really the list of what a wise woman should be like. You know, this right here, every woman that, that calls herself a believer, a follower of God, a Christian, whatever you want to call yourself, every woman should have this like, like a poster on their wall and it's like a checklist. They should be like, okay, I'm good here. I'm, I might be deficient here. I might need to work on that. All right? Because let me tell you something. There's a lot of sermons about this, but a lot of people like to hopscotch or emphasize one of them. No, we're going to go through all of them. Hey, but I'm going to preach the word and none of that hate going to work. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. Now, I don't know what you heard, what you heard. but don't believe anyone that can't show you the word. The next part of chapter 31. This whole chapter is, um, you know, is known as the virtuous woman um, chapter. You know, this portion of chapter 31. All right. This right here is really the list of what a wise woman should be like. You know, this right here, every woman that, that calls herself a believer, a follower of God, a Christian, whatever you want to call yourself, every woman should have this like like a poster on their wall and it's like a checklist they should be like okay i'm good here i'm i might be deficient here i might need to work on that all right because let me tell you something there's a lot of sermons about this but a lot of people like to hopscotch or emphasize one of them no we're going to go through all of them and every woman every christian woman any woman that calls herself by the name of jesus she should desire to to be this type of woman you know this is not some uh well she is like a superwoman <laughs> but but we're gonna start off because it says in verse 10 an excellent wife who can find you know the king james says virtuous and and that word virtuous you know could mean a lot of things and that's the thing a lot of a lot of people like to interpret virtuous their own definition but here in the esv it says an excellent wife who can find see a a a believing woman has to be an excellent woman. She cannot be mediocre. She cannot be good enough. And a wise woman is an excellent wife, right? Excellence. That's what a, a virtuous woman is. She's an excellent. And, and in the next few verses is going to define how excellent she is. You know, because a lot of women like to say, oh, I'm, I'm an excellent woman. <laughs> but yet when you go through the list, they're not that excellent. They, they, in their own minds, they are, but not according to the word of God, all right? An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels, all right? So if you find an excellent wife, that's a very valuable, very rare commodity. You know, jewels in, in, um, in the King James, it says um, she's more precious than rubies. Click on that. It says that she is more precious than rubies. It, it, it's like she's like um, platinum. That's how special she is. Right? He says uh, she is her her for her price is far above rubies. You know, back then, go back. Rubies was like like the platinum of those days. And if you had rubies, like wow, here saying that she's more valuable than that. This excellent wife, not just a wife, an excellent wife, or, or a virtuous wife. All right, now we're gonna go through the list of what makes her excellent. It says this. The heart of our husband trusts in her and he will lack no, no, and he will have no lack of gain. All right. It says that the heart of a husband trusts in her. Look, if you're married and your husband cannot trust you, you're, you cannot say you're excellent. See over here, it gives the criteria that, that, that determines what, what makes a woman excellent. Again, a woman could say she's excellent, but here saying that the husband can tell her if she's excellent because it says that the husband trusts in her. If a husband does not trust in his wife, she's not excellent. Whether it's sleeping around, being an adulteress, or just trust in, in, in confiding information. You know, I, I see a lot of YouTube stuff about men and women relationship. One of the things that men say is they don't trust the person they're with. A lot of them. And, 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 and that's in the church too. They don't trust their wives. So you know what? You can say you're virtuous, but if a husband doesn't trust you, if he's like, you know what? I don't think she, she's with me. 
I don't think she's got my back. I don't, th I don't think if I tell her this information, she'll keep it or even worse, she'll use it against me. If he does not trust you, you're not an excellent wife. The heart of the husband trusts in her and he will, and he will have no lack of gain. In other words, anytime he, he gets stuff, she's not going to drain him. She's not going to be like, oh, you got a $1,000 um, um, bonus? Oh, let's go squander it on so-and-so. No, he will lack, he will have no lack of gain. He, his money will always be on point because she, she knows how to spend it. You know, a lot of guys get hooked up with these women and all they want to do is just squander everything that they, that they make. You know, that's just, and I'm talking about Christian women too. You know, they, they think that they got to be, they're very worldly. All right, next verse. She will do him, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. <laughs> she, she will do him good. She does him good. She always does good to him and no harm. She will not do him any harm. All the, not some of the days of his life. Not the majority, not the, well, you know, he deserves for me to do good. So I'm going to do good all the days of her life. She's doing good to him. She does good. All right. That's what an excellent wife is. You know, a lot of women, they like to make excuses and justify themselves. Like Sirach says, a, a sinner, a, it says, um, a sinner will not re receive, um, correction, but will find an excuse. That's what she does. Here it says, all the days of her life, she will do him no, no harm. Verse 13, she seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. All right? in, those, in those times, women had to make, make their own things. She seeks the things that she needs and then she does it with her hands. She doesn't say, I'm too tired, I don't wanna do it, no. It says that she seeks it. She looks for it. She, she goes shopping. She's like, hmm, I got to look around and find the best value. She looks, she seeks wool and flax and works willingly and works with willing hands, right? Her hands are willing. She's like, I'm, I'm willing to do anything. What do I have to do? She doesn't complain. She doesn't say, you know what? It's too much. I've I had a rough day. I had a rough week. Her hands are willing. It's like, it's like in the military where, when there's a private and there's a sergeant, the sergeant tells the private to come over here. You see the, the private come up and say, um, yes, sergeant. That's how she is. That's what a excellent wife is. She's willing to work with the hands. Verse 14. She is like the, sh like the ships of merchant. She brings her food from afar. So, so here, um, Solomon or Lemuel is comparing a woman that goes shopping. She brings her food from afar. She, she, I mean, she's not going down the block to get the, she's really doing her research. She's really trying to find the things that she needs, even if she has to go far to get it. And, and when she brings it, it's like a big load. It's not like, oh, it's too much. I don't think I could carry it. I don't think, no, she's like a merchant ship. You know, back in those days, a merchant ship had a lot of cargo from, you know, it had spices, it had an exotic animals, and it had a lot of stuff. That's how she appears, and she got it from far away. You know, it just shows how willing she is to get the best deal, you know, or get the things that she needs. She'll, she'll go far away to get it, all right? Verse 15, she rises while it is yet night. Click on 15. It says in, um, yeah, in, 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 in NIV, it says, she gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Go back. So she gets up at the night and provides food for her household and portion for her maidens. In other words, she's not even thinking about herself. She's thinking about everybody else and she's preparing for them. You know, that's what an excellent wife does. She, she's all right. It, let's use modern term, you know. If, if, if she got kids, she'll pack up their bags for school. She'll get their lunch ready, everything ready for them to go. You know, she don't want them to eat the garbage that's in school. You know, the people putting fentanyl on stuff and all that. No, she prepares their meals. She gets them ready. She gets their clothes ready. 
That's what she does it. What it says, she rises while it is still yet night. So she she's thinking about tomorrow, the night before. She's not like I'm zoning out. That's it. I'm done. I'm I'm just gonna you know shut down. No, that's not what an excellent wife does. Verse sixteen. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. All right. So she considers a field and buys it. She's very entrepreneurial. She's, she's always looking for opportunity. And when she finds an opportunity, she said, you know what? I think we should buy that because she considered it. It's not like she just said, I want that field. No, she really, she did her research. She's very well informed of the market, of the situations, of the seasons. She considered not, I want it because we need it. No, she considered the field and said, you know what? I'm going to get it. And then what, but when she gets it, what does she do? What does she do with it? Does she put it up on a wall or something or just leave it there? No, she, with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. So whatever she bought, she cultivates. It's not like she just bought it and say, okay, it's there. I'm good. No, she does something with it, you know? And that's the thing. A lot of women, they buy things <laughs> and, and they can't do nothing with it. If you're going to buy something, at least make it grow, you know, whether it's, it's a field or, or some stock or investment or, you know, some property, maybe some real estate, you know, if, if you're going to in, get involved in real estate, you got to be, if you're going to be successful, you got to put your hands to it. You know, you got to paint the walls. You got to maybe, you know, put tiles on the floor to make the place look better. But, it, but this is what an excellent wife does. She doesn't just buy it. She, she puts more into it and, and builds it. You know, I right, verse 17, she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. In other words, she's a strong woman. I, it's talking about physically strong. She says she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She is dressed. She's a, a strong woman. She emotionally, physically, she's not going to with her emotionally. She's not going to be like, oh, oh, this is too much. I can't do it now because it's too hard. Not an excellent wife. An excellent wife would be like, okay, this situation is bad, but I got to do what I got to do. And she makes her arm strong, meaning she's physically strong. She's a strong woman. She's like they say, she's built for tough. <laughs> she's not making excuses why she can't or cannot do it. You know, she, 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 you know, she, she could do anything, you know, she don't make excuses. She's, she's physically able to do it. That's what an excellent wife does. All right. Verse, um, nine, 18, she perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. So in other words, she's staying up all night, but what's she doing? Staying up all night, watching Netflix, you know, going binge, binge watching on some show. No, it says she perceives that her merchandise is profitable. She sees the opportunities financially and she's thinking about it and she stays up all night trying to, you know, maximize that potential. All right. So, so she, she's very entrepreneurial. She's, and she's not wasting her time at night, you know, doing nothing. All right. Verse 19, she puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. All right, back in those days, women had to make their own clothes. So she made it. She puts her hand to it. She, you know, the, the spindle, you know, it, it, it might leave marks and calluses and might even cut you, but she's not like, well, I don't want to get my hands hurt. It's, it's going to hurt and I don't want to do it. I'm going to get tired. No, she puts her hands to the distaff and, and, her, and her hand to the spindle. She's willing, she's willing to do the hard work. She doesn't make excuses. She doesn't say, you know what? It's too hard. I have a, I have my maid do it for me. No, she does it. All right. Or, or in our age, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just hire one of these, uh, these maids that do the homes. I'm not going to do it. No, she puts her hands to the distaff and her, and her hands to the spindle. Verse 20, she opens her hands to the poor and reaches her hands to the needy. So she's very considerate of other people in, in her community. She sees needs and she's willing to assist. You know, somebody's in need. She's like, you know what? Let, I, I, you know, let me go out and make some soup for them. Or let me, let me hold like a fundraiser. You know, she's very considerate. She doesn't say, well, you know, I don't have the time. You know, I don't want to deal with it. No, she, she 
opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Verse 21. She is not afraid of snow of her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. In other words, she is not afraid of the snow. She, in other words, if it does snow eventually, she's not afraid of it. Why? Because she's prepared. She's not like one of these people that like, oh no, we were, we're not ready for it. So now we got to go rush over there and get this. No, she's not even, she, she's not afraid. She's not even concerned about it. Why? Because all her household are clothed. They're clothed in what? In scarlet. You know, scarlet in those days was a very expensive, very precious um, form of dressing. They're all clothed in scarlet. Her whole household. So they all dress nice. You know, in a lot of Christian churches, they think that holiness means you got to look all drabby and drip. <laughs> you know, like, you know, just ugly. No, it says that her all all her all her household are clothed in scarlet. They're all dressed nice, including herself. You know, a lot. Of, I tell you this: a lot of women get comfortable and they think, "Well, you know what? I don't need to dress up anymore. I could just wear whatever." And no, they're all dressed nice. They're all dressed in scarlet. You know, in in the Book of Psalms, it said that that David's daughters are dressed in in fine clothes. You know, this, I, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of churches out there that make it seem like women got to be dressed down and that's modesty. No, modesty is that your, your clothes are not tight and they're not showing, showing things that it shouldn't be showing. That's what I mean. But it doesn't mean that you, you, you got to wear like, uh, like hand-me-downs and, and, uh, what's those things that Lumberjacks uses? Uh, the, huh? Flannel shirts and, uh, and those, uh, what's those things? Suspenders. No, you, it says they're all dressed in scarlet. And that's a good advice for a lot of women. A lot of women think that, oh, I'm an excellent wife now, but now I could dress down, do whatever. No, they're all dressed in scarlet. She, she gets the best for them. Okay. 22. She makes bed, bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Look at that. Again, it's emphasizing how she dresses. First, it says that she makes her own bed coverings for herself. You know, she could just have a bed and say, you know what, I'm just going to have a mattress and a sheet. No, but she, she wants the bed to look, look nice. She wants whatever she has to look nice. She has a, a touch of flair. She wants to add a touch of flair to what she has. She's not just, I got a bed, that's it. I'm just going to say, no, she's like, you know what, I want to get the, I want to make it look nice. Maybe I had, I, I, I'll have, I'll put a little, uh, you know, a little style on the, on the, on the blanket or the pillows. She's very stylish. She makes her, her she makes bed coverings for herself and her clothing, the way she dresses is fine linen and purple. Again, an excellent wife. A lot of Christian women think I could dress all drip and drabby and, and it's okay. Jesus loved me. Yeah, okay, fine. But you know, you're not an excellent wife. <laughs> you're not an excellent, you might think, oh, but that's outside appearance. Here, the wisdom of God says that the excellent wife knows how to take care of herself, knows how to dress. She's, she doesn't dress like a slob. In, she doesn't dress around in moo-moos. She likes to represent herself. You know, there's a, a verse in Sirach that says, a man may be known by the, by the, the way they dress. <laughs> Here, she's dressed in fine linen and purple. She looks nice. She looks presentable. She looks like she takes care of herself. You know, again, a lot of Christian women, I, I, and I see them, a lot of them in church, they get very, very comfortable. They get the jeans, uh, you know, the just ordinary jeans and, and shirts that are not even tucked in. That's not how the excellent wife appeared. She had fine linen and purple. Next verse. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Okay. Now, some, some people say, oh, this verse has nothing to do with her. Mind you, the whole chapter is about the virtuous woman. So what is her husband have to do with her? Well, if she's an excellent wife, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders. You know, the gates was where people, people in, in high esteem used to be at. So in other words, based on the context, because of her, he is known in the city gates. You know, she's such an excellent wife that 
she makes her husband better. You know, I remember there was a song years ago. It, it, it went like this. I'm a movement by myself, but we're a force when we're together. You know, when a guy's by himself, he's a movement. But if he has an excellent wife, he's a force. And this is what this verse is saying. Because of her, he, he is known in the gates when he sits among the elders. You know, I think of another, in, in, in the Bible, there's a story about Nabal. Nabal and David and, and his wife, Abigail. Abigail was an excellent wife. Nabal was a fool. He was a foolish man. His name meant fool. And yet, David was the one begging Nabal for food. <laughs> David, he was not a king yet. He was um, running from Saul. He went to Nabal, the fool, to get food. How did this fool have such authority and position that David, the future king, would go to this fool? Why? Because how can a fool have attained that? Is because he had an excellent wife. He was known, even he was known in the gates when he sits among the, he, he, even that fool. Why? Because of his excellent wife. Now, if your husband, if you say you're a believer and your husband is a nobody or, or in the church, especially, <laughs> then, then, then you got to ask yourself, wait a minute, how am I making him better? Am I making him better? What am I doing? What, what am I doing to help him get to that level? Verse 24, she makes linen, linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchants. Again, she's very industrious. She's very entrepreneurial. She looks ways to make money. She's not, you know, she'll figure something out and, and she'll go to the market and she'll sell it. Even if it's sashes, sashes were things that you put around. It looked like a belt almost. You know, they, they still sell them today. She made them and she, and she sells them. She, she wasn't sitting around the house watching the prices, right? She was thinking about how can I, you know, do, let me bring it to our age. You know, if, if a, a woman, a stay at home mom, she, she's thinking of, okay, how can I sell stuff on eBay? You know, how can I make little things that might pique somebody's interest? That's what she does. All right. Verse 25, strength and dignity are her clothing, her true Clothing are not the fine linen and purple, even though she dresses on it. Her true clothing is that she's a strong woman and she has dignity. When people see her, they're like, that's a, that's a woman you got to respect. That's a, you know, when you walk around the people, other women, you could talk and act a certain way, but well, with her, you, you got to tone down. This, this woman, she's, you got to respect her. She, she's a strong woman. You know, you like, no, just don't mess around with her. She, you know, she's, she went through a lot and she's, she's still pushing through. She's strong and she's dignified. That's her clothing. And she laughs at the time to come. In other words, she thinks of head of all the circumstances, whether it's winter or financial, you know, they talk about recession and, or she thinks about, you know, things that are coming and she laughs, she's comfortable. She's not stressing it. She's at peace. She's like, I don't even have to worry about it. I'm, I'm good. I already got it. I got it down. She laughs at it. <laughs> oh, oh there, there's a recession coming next year after the election. <laughs> Cause she's already prepared. All right. She opens her mouth with wisdom. So when she talks, she says something really true wisdom is from this book. When she talks, she's using Bible verses. <laughs> she's not just speaking her mind, giving her opinion. When she opens her mouth, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of her, of kindness is on her tongue. In other words, when she speaks, she's a very kind person. She's not mean. She's not um, a loud mouth, a railer. She, the teaching of her, of kindness is on her tongue. Go, 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 um, click 26. I like the, the way the King James worded it. It said, um, it says, and, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. It's like a law in her mouth. Like I got to be kind. I'm going to speak kindly. I'm going to speak respectfully. I'm going to speak gently. I'm going to speak low. That's, that's her tongue. I go back. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Where am I? 27. She looks, she looks well to the ways of her household. So in other words, she, she looks around the house and she's like, okay, everything's good here, right? All the, are you good? Are you good? 
everything, oh, is the kitchen good? Is the, the plates up? Is the floor clean? She looks well, not, uh, I'll just take a peek. And then, uh, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness, All right? What is the bread of idleness? Let's bring it up to our century. What is the bread of idleness? You know what the bread of idleness is? I'm just going to sit here and eat popcorn while I watch TV. And does not eat the bread of idleness. She does not do that. If she does that, she'll feel bad. There, this excellent wife does not eat the bread of idleness. She's not sitting down with a popcorn watching hours of TV. That would be against her nature. She does not eat the bread of iron. You'll never see her like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to take a break and I'm just going to sit here and just eat, eat, you know, eat these popcorn. While... No, she does not. She doesn't do that. Her now in the next verse, again, a, a lot of women say they're excellent, but the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, um, let another man praise you and not your own mouth. Here, this is what is basically what this verse is going to say. Verse um, 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. So in other words, when the children come up, they rise up. They say, man, mom, I, I'm blessed to have you. You're, you're a great mom. I really do appreciate you. That's what the kids say. And not just on Mother's Day. They say it just spontaneously. They'll rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. So her husband will praise her. Right? So if your husband is not praising, you cannot say, well, I'm an excellent wife. I don't care what he says. Here, it says that the criteria, one of the criteria is that the husband praise you. And this is what he says in the next verse. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Okay. Christian women. Can your husband say that about you? Has your husband said that about you? Has your husband said, you know what? I've seen a lot of women and there have been a lot of, a, a lot of great women. But you surpassed them all. Everything here listed, you surpassed them. You went above and beyond. Can you say that? Or you were just mediocre. You were just getting by. Because if you're just mediocre, getting by, he's not going to say that to you. You can say, well, no, I did all. He's not going to say. That's what he's going to say because it's a fact. But if he doesn't say it, it's because it's not true. He, he's being honest. It's not true. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. See, an excellent wife wants to have an excellent spirit where she wants to surpass them all. She doesn't want to be, I just want to be adequate. I just want to be sufficient. I just want to be mediocre. If that's your mentality, you're not an excellent wife. Don't please don't go to Proverbs 31 and tell me you're a virtuous woman. Please don't do that. 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is vain. All right, a lot of people like to twist it first saying, you know, beauty is vain. Like beauty is, is pointless. No, beauty is, is important. We read throughout the Bible, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, for example, um, Isaac, when he saw Rebecca, he saw that she was beautiful, fair, you know, or, or, uh, or Jacob saw, um, Rachel and she was fair. They say, oh no, you, it don't matter if you're ugly or beautiful. No, of course, beauty is, is, is something, but charm is deceptive and beauty is vain. If, if, uh, if a man is caught up in a woman's charm, like, oh, she's, she's so nice and smiling and kind, you know, she's always happy and cracking jokes. She, charm is deceptive because she could be cracking jokes and sleeping with another man. Charm is deceptive and beauty is vain. You know, a woman's beauty is going to fade. You know, she's, we're all going to get old. You know, she, she's not going to be beautiful all the days of her life. We are, <laughs> You know, it's going to be a time where for all of us, where it's going to be over for us. But yeah, so beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Okay. A woman that fears God. How, how, do, how does a woman fear God? One, she keeps his commandments. And two, she'll look at this list and say, you know what? I got to live by this list. Don't tell me you fear God and you're not keeping this list. A woman, but a woman who fears the Lord, she will be praised. Even a husband praised her. He said, many women have done excellent, but you surpass them all. She will be praised. Give her the fruits of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So whatever she's done, you, you give a reward for her. If you've seen she's excellent, she deserves a, a reward. 
Don't be like, oh yeah, she's excellent, but you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do nothing for her. No, you give her a reward. Children, if you got an excellent mother, give her a reward. Say, you know what, mom, you, you've been a good mom and I appreciate all you've done for me. I want to do something for you. Give her something. Don't just give her lip service. It says, give her the fruit of her hands. You know, she's done things and she hasn't gotten a reward for it. It's up to you to give her a reward for it, you know, and, and let her works praise her in the gates. She don't need to praise herself. Her works will praise her. People look at her and say, that's an excellent woman. That's an, a, a woman that a, a man should want. That's a woman that I want my daughter to emulate. That's her works will praise her because all of the, all that she's done. So this, this right here is very important. I would suggest every woman to post this up on their, <laughs> put it up on their bedroom door, leave it there and have like a checklist and make sure to get understanding. Yeah. I, yeah. I made this video and I, I'm going to separate this from the first portion because I want women to get this because a lot of churches like to hopscotch and say, you know, let's focus on this verse, ignore, or just, you know, read this verse, but not really talk about it. I want women to truly understand what the criteria of, are of an excellent woman. All right. So they could be an excellent wife to their, to their husband, an excellent mom to their kids. And this is a criteria and we'll end there. So we thank God for his word and uh, that's it. Thank